Bitter X tries to tarnish my reputation. This all took place five years ago in the beginning. I've lived my whole life in Russia, except for the four and a half years I lived in the eastern part of the United States, where I went to college for a degree in engineering after completing my one year of national service. There are lots of good schools here, but I originally had the intention of moving to America permanently. I have relatives who live in North America, so I was invited to stay with them during this time. It turned out I didn't really stay with any of them because I am tall and good at sport. I also did high jump and basketball while in school. I was never that good, but adequate enough to make the team to such a degree that I was retroactively given a small athletic subsidy while already enrolled. It made my tuition slightly cheaper, which for an international student was a concern, even if my parents were high status regarding money. While enrolled in college, I met my soon-to-be girlfriend Natalia, a girl originally from Connecticut and from a very wealthy family. Her major was fine arts, and we met in an English class and began dating. Natalia was a little more than two years ahead of me in her studies age-wise, but we became a serious enough couple to where I took an apartment outside of campus, and she moved in with me. Her parents' house wasn't far from campus, but she chose to stay in my apartment, mostly because I don't think she wanted to bring me to her house too often. Maybe her parents didn't approve of me, or maybe she did not approve of me enough to show me to her parents very much. We had a good relationship, or at least I thought it was good. She never complained and always liked to show off that we are a couple. She was the first person I knew in my circles who owned a selfie stick and she would take it with us and everything was a photo opportunity. I didn't have any social media at the time, but I made one just so that she could tag me in her posts. Eventually all her social media friends added me as a friend also. And since many people from my own home country had social media too, they saw me and added me as well. Among Natalia's friend group, people called me Drago, which is dumb because I don't think I look like Ivan Drago. Natalia makes no secret to me of the fact that she is from a wealthy family, and she tells me that she has a trust fund that will pay for her lifestyle her whole life, and she doesn't even really need to attend college. I'm from a privileged background too, but I don't have a trust fund myself. My father owns a small hotel outright, and where we come from, that means you're rich like Steve Jobs in a relative sense. So, sometimes in the mail. Natalia would get these bank statements that just tell her how much money she has in her trust fund, how much interest it made, and what her dividend, or in other words, her allowance, for the month is. It is for this reason that Natalia is in no particular hurry to finish school, which is why at the time she was already 23, but only barely a sophomore. Natalia would show these statements to me and leave them lying around the house. They didn't have her whole bank account number listed on them anyway. They just showed balances and the name of her bank. My parents and my athletics paid for a good amount of my expenses, but I still worked on campus at the bookstore to earn more money. Natalia didn't work. I didn't really have many issues with Natalia. She seemed friendly enough, was pretty and good company. We had lots of things to talk about and we had fun together, or at least I had fun and thought she had fun too. I didn't know if I ever wanted to marry her, but I didn't rule out the idea. One thing I didn't like about her was that she was very dramatic and very prone to panic. For example, if we were at a department store where she wants to buy a particular thing and her favorite personal shopper isn't available, she'll act like it's the end of the world. She wasn't above making scenes. She'd also be a bit short and rude with restaurant staff. One thing that I thought was a bit disingenuous of her was that although she was a millionaire, she liked to pretend to be poor. Not that there's anything wrong with not flashing your wealth because there isn't. What I mean is that she'd try to act like she came up rough and that she was making life happen on her own, if I make sense. She tried to act like she was down for the cause, as some say. It's kind of like when rich suburban kids try too hard to copy how things happen in a hip hop video. Except Natalia wasn't trying to be white female Tupac. She tried to do this bohemian artist thing and pretend to some people that she was living on a shoestring. Around me, she was more herself. Or really, I don't know which self is her real self. All I know is that she isn't poor, but she pretends to be in certain company. Well, moving on. Eventually, Natalia tells me, what do you think of having an open relationship? I didn't really know anything about open relationships, but when Natalia explained what they were, I told her I wasn't interested in anything like that. I asked her if she wanted to be in one, and is that why she's asking? But she said no, that she just read something about open relationships. From my now perspective, I know she probably had someone or some people in mind who she wanted to date or have sex with, or she already had been doing these things with one or more people but just hasn't told me about it yet. Natalia had had her inner reproductive organs surgically cut 
so that she could not have children. I bring this up because she brought it up to me when she was practically begging me to have unprotected sex with her, and I was worried about maybe getting her pregnant when she didn't want to be. She showed me the actual paperwork for the procedure by emailing me a PDF document that she received from her own doctor. I only thought about it after the whole open relationship discussion because up until then we had been having sex without a condom, and I assumed I was her only partner and I knew for a fact I was clean. But now, I was worried whether or not she was actually clean. But for a couple weeks, more things appeared going as normal. She assured me over and over again that she had no other partners, and so like a fool I continued to have unprotected sex with her. Suddenly though, within the month, Natalia tells me she needs to move out, that our relationship isn't working out. Okay, I think, I'm sad to see you go, but can we be friends? And her attitude is, yeah, of course we can be friends. Even then, I knew she probably met someone new or had always been with that person and was now just ready to move on from me. My attitude is, well, most girls come and go, that's life. I'm sure many women have the same approach to guys. She left a lot of her stuff behind like clothes and papers, including her bank statements that had her trust fund info on them. I tell her since we're friends, why don't you come by and get your stuff? Or I'll bring it all to you. She said, oh, that's fine, I'll get them someday. Could you please hold them for me? And it's not as though she had that many things at my apartment. I think she especially didn't want to have me bring it to her house or new place where she stayed because she had a new boyfriend, none of my business. I never linked my social media to my phone or went to computers to check it because I just didn't care about that sort of thing and I still don't. But I found out later that Natalia had deleted and blocked me on social media almost immediately after she moved out and combed through her friends and deleted anyone who appeared to be one of my friends from back home. I was almost done with my degree and over the next year completely lost touch with Natalia, though I never argued with her or had an official falling out. I assumed we just moved on with our lives. I had been accepted at another school one state away from my undergraduate college to complete a master's degree and didn't want to waste time, so I hired a service to box up some of the less important things at my house and forward them to my new apartment. By this time, I had bought a used car, and so with one suitcase, I could set myself up for a few days while I waited for the bulk of my furniture and other luggage. I sent a text to Natalia and emailed her too, telling her where I was moving. Of course, I rerouted all her mail to go to her parents' house not long after she moved out, because for a long time she used my place as her address. She wasn't thinking big picture enough to do it herself, otherwise I could have kept getting her mail for a while. In my new hometown, I jumped headfirst right into studying and hardly even went home except to eat and sleep. I never even opened a few of my boxes that contained things I wouldn't need, like old textbooks or very heavy winter clothing. Those stayed in their moving boxes. So after another year, I have my masters and move back to Russia. I'm happy because I had managed to get a job right away in my chosen profession. I sell my car and most of my random furniture on the internet I had written down what was in each moving box, on the outside of the box. Those boxes that contained nothing I needed right away were kept sealed the entire time I was in my second American apartment. When I arrived in my current home, I finally opened all of my boxes and realized that I still had some of Natalia's old clothes from when we were a couple, two and a half, three years ago. I even still had her old trust fund statements. I had over a year's worth of them, which is about the length of time Natalia lived with me. Since it had been such a long time and we hadn't talked in years, I assumed she no longer wanted the things, but I still didn't want to give them away or throw them away without seeing what she had to say. So for the first time in years, I check my social media and I'm surprised to see that she blocked me from sending her messages. I try to text her, but her number has changed or maybe she blocked me there too. Anyway, she doesn't reply. Same thing happens when I email her. Why will she block me, I wonder? I think it must be an internet problem. I log out and just try looking at her social media as a random web user and have no problem at all. I see that she hasn't really changed, still pretty, still dressing all quirky and bohemian. I feel kind of weird, but I take a little break from what I'm doing and just see what she's been up to for the last couple of years. She's with some new guy now who looks a little bit like me, but with longer hair and less responsible haha. Well, good for her. I can see that she really puts her whole life out there on social media. Every little thing is worth an update from her. She is as dramatic as ever. I do notice she's a lot more political than she was before. Well, that's good. It's always nice to believe in something passionately.
I am not at all surprised to see that as usual, she portrays herself as a struggling artist who's making a way for herself in the big bad city. Whatever works for you, Natalia, work it. She talks trash about high fashion brands, how she never had anything growing up, how she ate stew from grass as a child because she was so poor. She is really laying it on thick. And also, she ripped off that story from me because I was telling her about how my relatives were forced to eat grass stew during the Patriotic War because there wasn't much other food. All of this is just her being a poseur, which doesn't affect me, but what does affect me is when I see a post that mentioned me by name. Nat, this is so like your abusive ex, oh my god. Oh. Her friend was referring to a picture of how verbal abuse is just as damaging as physical abuse. Natalia had replied, Yeah, he really tried to destroy my self-esteem. He was also not shy about threatening me. Lots of guys who were her friends on social media commented that they'd kill me or kick my ass if they ever saw me. For most of them, I would laugh because I would smash them like so many ants. Especially how most of them are like wearing women's blue jeans, I mean. Really, are you sure about that, stick legs, sir? But right now I am furious because Natalia lied about me. Some of them were even seriously talking about naming me to school administrators about having my degree canceled or having me put on some kind of offender list. None of them bothered to keep in contact with me, so they didn't know I moved back to Russia. But they were also talking about reporting me to the police and having me arrested. In other posts, Natalia also mentioned me by name and actually accused me of assaulting her in various ways, that I cheated through school, that my parents are in the Russian mob, lol, okay. In every post, Natalia tried to come off like she was taking the high road by not reporting me to authorities and that it was her cross to bear as a survivor. Her friends were like lemmings giving her electronic backpats about how courageous she was, barf. By a little digging, I saw that she broke up with the guy who I figured out was the man she moved on to after me, and he was getting slammed too. And I'll assume he was also blocked on social media. From piecing together what Natalia says to her friends on social media, it's clear she's built up an image of being a struggling artist, and her current boyfriend also appears to believe she's a struggling artist, and they share an apartment together. I piece it together that the boyfriend works a nine to five, but he looks like a hipster type. So maybe he is an artist too. He looks like he's struggling to keep it all together. They are totally into the activist scene. They're always talking about online funding for all kinds of charitable work. Noble stuff, not being sarcastic. Natalia smears me across platforms. The book of many faces, the grams that are instant, the stupid blue bird app, where people unknowingly brag about how worthless their existences are. Right away, I think of the bank statements I have that show Natalia is anything but struggling. Because according to the statements I have, unless Natalia developed a $10,000 a day coke habit over the past two years and bought a Bentley and crashed it into Taylor Swift and lost a court case, she's getting just over six figures a year, just sitting on her ass, and will continue to earn these funds in perpetuity. But then I think, I've moved on and am happy. I don't even know Natalia anymore. I don't really care what these social media losers think of me. Until I see yet another post where Natalia makes this dramatic statement about how she is unable to have babies as a result of a traumatic assault. To her credit, she didn't blame me for this imaginary attack, but she was still trying to score social points by pretending to be a victim. I was even more convinced when she and her friends actually altered some of the pics of me online that Natalia had once taken with her selfie stick and exit out my face using Photoshop paint. The photos were captioned with all kinds of untrue slurs, really harsh, criminal accusations. Funny how all of them are so eager to accuse me of being a criminal and are talking about how they will kick my ass if they see me, but none of them think of telling the police about any supposed crimes I committed. Seems really lazy. She also blamed PTSD for the fact that she was near 30 and still not graduated from college. I thought about somehow faking an account and getting her to add me as a friend, but then, while looking through her friend list, and she had like a thousand friends, I saw that one of my friends was still on there. My friend doesn't speak any English, and he doesn't spend much time on social media either, so he had no idea what any of these people were even saying. I noticed even long ago that it was weird that Natalia didn't include her own parents on her friends list, but she explained that away by saying they were too old and didn't do technology. Maybe Natalia, but chill. Your parents are like 52. I suspect now. Even then, I suspected it. It's because she wanted to build up a different persona online, and her rich parents would ruin that image. 
Through lots of digging, I figure out where Natalia works. It's a non-profit. I finally decide to return Natalia's things. I put her old clothes, many of them really expensive designer shoes and purses, into a box with her bank statements and address them to her non-profit. I don't actually write Natalia's name on the outside. I write her name on the inside, explaining in a note that these items are all things that she bought while she lived with me when I was still in the USA. I figure they could raise many thousands of dollars if they sell these things on eBay. I mean, if Natalia, the owner, was willing to part with them, of course. It would be great for their non-profit. Could you ask her about it? A couple of days later. As for Natalia's actual bank statements, before mailing them in the box, I collected some of her greatest hits online, where she posted pictures of herself at rallies bemoaning the 1%, complaining about her hard-knock life, about how much she cared for others suffering. And I combined these photos on a photo editor with scans of her bank statements, with red highlighter around her monthly allowance, how much she had in total, and how the funds would last forever. I also made sure to highlight the name of the originator of the trust, a quite well-known name in American industry who is identified as her great-grandfather. For each of the 12 statements, I add one of Natalia's hypocritical posts about being poor, struggling, living check to check, how she depends on her art to survive. My favorite salvo is where I screen cap her post about how she is unable to have children due to an attack. I merge this with my PDF she sent me, where she paid over $10,000 to have her tubes wrecked. I made sure to highlight her parents' state and zip code on the invoice, though I crossed off their exact address. I made my point, though, that the procedure, which took place a few years ago, was when she still lived with her parents in one of the most titanically expensive locations on planet Earth. My Russian friend and I spent the next fun hours spamming the walls of all Natalia's friends with these pictures that show she is rich and a liar. All of them he had access to anyway, and it was well over 300. We make sure to fire similar battleship broadsides to her over-filtered and photoshopped account, where she's always thinking she has to lie to kick it, and also send her and all her friends lots of bird calls on that other app. The fallout was hilarious. The denial sad and pathetic, but mostly hilarious too. Credibility? Oh, that credibility. Oh, Natalia, it's destroyed. Why is your boyfriend so mad at you? Did all the organizations you've liked on social media like it when they saw you were sitting on a fortune and yet claiming, I don't have any money, starving artist lol. But can I offer my time or homemade brownies teehee? Day 1, friend count, 1,234, subscribers, 2,740, followers, 1,080. A week later, friend count. 620, subscribers, 895, followers, 466, Natalia, are you sure you're not James Charles? My friend doesn't speak English, but he and I are waiting to see if he'll be the last one eventually. And anyway, social castration and death needs no translation. Months after that, I was curious to see later if she was online anymore. Poof, her profiles were gone, or at least the ones she had been using for years. I hope her boyfriend enjoyed his sudden come up. It was probably an amazing day at the office for him to come home and learn that his bohemian hipster girlfriend was sitting on millions of dollars. To this day, I have no real idea why Natalia would do this to me to begin with. I was always nice to her and never even raised my voice to her. I can't remember even one occasion where we actually argued. It's a mystery. What isn't a mystery is the fact that the nonprofit actually called me long distance to thank me for the box and they made sure Natalia got it. I didn't try to make any secret that these items came from me. So if Natalia wants to sue me for finishing a war, she started, she can go right ahead. She will drown in her bunker beneath her lies, and I will be breakdancing and crip walking, planting my flag on her Reichstag. Anyway, they said Natalia tried to deny the things were hers at first, but later when she saw the bank statements, she tried to say I bought those things and was trying to smear her. Yeah, okay. I bought a bunch of 9K purses and mailed them to strangers on the off chance it might embarrass you. Eventually, she took the papers making some dumbass claim that they were forgeries, but left the big ticket items pretending they weren't hers. For what it's worth, the people at the nonprofit knew the statements were legit and told me so. The girl who called me from the nonprofit was asking me if she and the other girls could have the items. I reminded her that the items were Natalia's, but if she abandoned them, then I say, go to town. I asked if Natalia still worked there and if I could talk to her. Oh no, sorry they tell me, Natalia moved back home with her parents. 
Must be nice having such a luxurious eight bedroom fallback trench. Live by the sword, Natalia? Enjoy getting impaled on it. I hope you enjoyed finally getting your stuff back.